It is the holiday season, which means it is the time for our best books of the year. Now, I set a reading goal. My kids are teenagers, which means they need me less, which means I have more time for reading, plus reading's my job. So I set a goal of reading 100 books this year, and I'm closing in to the last few. And out of those 100 books, these are my top 10. And I chose these both because I enjoyed them, but I also feel like years from now, I'm still gonna be recommending them because they're gonna stay with me that long. So I wanna share them with you. Starting off strong, we have James by Percival Everett. It just won the National Book Award this week. Um, it is also the pick for UCSC's Deep Read, which means the author is coming to Santa Cruz in May and there's programming for months leading up to it where you can deep dive into this book. It's a retelling of Huckleberry Finn from James's point of view. And you just get to not only have the adventure and the kind of magnitude of the historical significance of the book, but you also get to watch Jim reclaim his humanity throughout this book and it just like it almost like changes literature so i highly recommend you get that um, if you want the book that everyone is talking about at bookshop and will continue to it's martyr by kaveh akbar this is a coming of age story of an iranian american boy um kaveh is actually an, a poet so you can see there's poetry infused throughout the book and it's him struggling in his 20s trying to figure out what he wants for his life this amazing backstory that gives you folklore and other things but at the end of the day it is so fresh and so innovative it's hard to explain how it makes you feel but once you finish reading it all you want to do is talk to other people about it this is the book everybody's talking about um if you like deep immersive fiction with incredible characters think Anne Patchett or Hello Beautiful from last year or Heaven Earth Grocery Store, The Mighty Red by Louise Erdrich. Now we all love Louise Erdrich. We know she can write. She's won all the awards out there. This is a quiet story. It's one girl in one small town coming of age, choosing between two boys. There's a little mystery in it. And she's just trying to find herself in the midst of her family and community expectations. It is so well done. You just like live in these character souls. I highly recommend it if you're just like wanting deep immersive fiction. The book that I think we all needed this year is The Wedding People. I needed escape in 2024. I needed to laugh. Um, this book did it for me. It just made me so happy to read it. It's about a woman who feels like it's the end of her life and she has nothing less to live for and she goes to a hotel and she actually gets involved with this wedding party she has nothing to do with and just being around these totally different people changes her perspective on life. I know it sounds cliche, but it's anything but. It's so funny and so smart though at the same time. Think like, where'd you go Bernadette or lessons in chemistry, that kind of thing. Um, going the opposite direction, if you want quiet but deeply emotional fiction, this is Poor Dear by Claire Oshetsky. Now, Claire is actually an author from Santa Cruz, and this was just nominated as a finalist for the best fiction in all of the state of California from California authors. It's about a story of a very, very young girl. Something tragic happens, and she carries this memory with her throughout her life, and you're trying to figure out, like, what happened and did it really happen, and it really infuses the sense of, like, memory and what it does to ourselves and our and who we believe we are throughout the rest of our life it is so deeply felt um this is my non-fiction pick of the year all the beauty in the world patrick bringsley is a new yorker author his brother was unfortunately diagnosed with cancer in his 20s and he tries to figure out what he wants to do with his life and he decides to give up kind of writing for the new yorker and that fast-paced life and he becomes a guard at the met in new york and he does it to have this like quiet reflective space and he does it for 10 years and what he finds is he both gets that quiet reflective space but then the humanity and diversity of the world flows through the doors in terms of the other guards from all around the world the people who come to the met and then the paintings on the wall and he reflects on all of this it is so beautiful and it just reminds you that there is beauty in the world and we're here to see it and we should be grateful for it um, you can give this to literally everybody and they will love it swimming in paris uh, this is a French author. It's a woman's life told in three stories. And I would say that the first chapter of the story of this girl who's like figuring out as a woman whether she has agency over her own body is one of the best pieces of short fiction I've ever read in my entire life. Um, so if nothing else, get this book and read that first part. But it's the story of this kind of woman throughout her life. And I just think it resonated so much with me about how we view ourselves. Um, and I learned a lot about different societies in Europe and all that kind of stuff. It is just so powerful. Um, we all love Tommy Orange. 
uh, this takes a character from his award-winning book there there um, and kind of goes on a journey of multiple generations uh, Native American experience the trauma that they endured but also kind of their chosen family of how they get through it and they get through it by being together not perfectly all the time but it doesn't matter um, and kind of the kind of grit and need of communities to overcome trauma um, and it's so beautifully written as Tommy Orange is known to have done. I know a lot of you don't do short stories and I'm here to tell you you should try it because short stories are amazing. Uh, ben Shattuck, The History of Sound, this is my favorite short story collection this year, all takes place on the East Coast. Every story is just perfect in and of itself. So you could read one story, put it aside, read another book, come back and read another story. You're gonna love it. I think Obama picked it as one of his favorite books over the summer. Um, just super, super compelling short fiction. And finally, same as it ever was, Claire Lombardo. Now I know I have teenagers in my life. This is the story of a woman with teens, young adults, who kind of is at that moment of reflection, like what choices did I make? and how do I like how my life ended up? Um, and the difference between this and a lot of other books that came out this year that were very similar is you get the backstory of some things that she chose to do in her past and why she did it and the relationship she formed and how it made her who she is today with her family and her kids. Super funny, laugh out loud funny, but also just kind of like a long story of one family where you get completely absorbed. So those are my top 10 of the year. I'd love to know what you love this year. There's a lot more. I'll tell you about all 100 for whatever person in your life. I'm here and I hope to see you this holiday season.